Welcome to the video tutorial on creating a graphical calculation view with a dimension data type. This tutorial is within the tutorial series for Access Advanced, which you can find at developers.sap.com. I am using the SAP Web IDE for SAP HANA on a HANA Express instance with Access Advanced applications. For your reference, the version of my instance is SAP HANA 2.0 Support Package Stack 1. One of the prerequisites for these tutorials is that you have imported the Shine data model as instructed in the previous tutorial. So if you have not done that so far, please pause this video and come back once you have completed that. So let's get started. In our DB folder within data, we will create a new folder called models. So far, in previous tutorials, we have not been using namespaces. However, as of now, calculation views sometimes fail if namespaces are not present. So we will manually activate namespaces in this folder. We will do this by creating a new file called dot HDI namespace with the following content that you can copy from the snippet in the tutorial. Save. And now we will create our first calculation view. In this first tutorial, we will create a dimension calculation view. This type of calculation view actually replaces the older attribute views that you could find in previous versions of HANA. If you notice here that you cannot really create attribute or analytic views anymore, you only have the calculation view option, and that is because you will not find that option in the newer versions of SAP HANA. I am going to call this product view. Data category, as we said, will be dimension and the type will be standard. There we go. Our goal here is to join products with their suppliers and some more data from them. So I will drag a join node here and add the products from the Shine model and the business partners. We can see that we have the partner ID on the business partner side. This is the master data for business partners. And then we have the supplier partner ID from the product side. So I will go ahead and define the join for these. Because I only want the products with a valid business partner as a supplier, I will keep the join type as inner join. And now I can go ahead and choose the output columns. In the case of the products, I want the category, the currency, description ID, dimension unit, If I have the unit, then I can choose the depth and height, uh, name, the price, product ID. And now for the business partners, I want to have the address ID that I will join later with the address table, company name, say email address, And that should be it. Okay. 
Now that my join definition is ready, I can go ahead and choose the columns that I want as an output. So say from the products, I want the category, the currency, description ID, name ID, price, address from the business partner as I will join it later with the address table, company name, currency, say I also want the email address. I can add it to output using this button here. For example, if I only wanted for some reason the products with currencies dollars, I could add a filter here. Because I have the address ID and we want the address data from the business partners, I will add another join node here that will combine our first join and the address table. I can go ahead and join the address ID from the business partners to the address table and that will give me the address from the business partner. It could happen that my business partner may not have a valid address in my table, but I would still like to see the business partner and the product. So I will go ahead and change the join type to a left outer so that even though the address may not be there, this results will still be projected. Once again, in the mapping tab, I will add all results from my original business partners in products and also the city, country, region and street. If we look at the data preview from our table, The end date is till the end of times, basically. In a productive system, it may happen that the business partner changes its address. So the validity end date is set to the day in which that address is no longer valid and the new address is the one that gets this new validity end date that is basically till the end of times. So you may want to put that validation to only get the records whose validity end date is till the end of times. So you would do that in the filter expression just like with that with the first join and the currency. Finally, we want to add texts. We'll take care of the layout later and add our texts from the text table. We have a description ID here, which we can join against the text ID. And we want to only have those texts that are in a language relevant to the user. So we will choose the text join here which will pick up the session language and use it as a filter to the language column that in this case is the is called language here in this table. And once again, from the mapping, we will choose all the fields that we already had plus the text that we just added. 
finally, we will drag this into the projection. And this button here, the auto layout, will make our view pretty. In our projection, we can review the fields that we will be projecting. We may not want all of them. For example, we have currency here is there twice. We have a currency as a duplicate, so we can go ahead and trace that. We can see that this currency here is duplicate. We will remove it. We want everything now in semantics, we could add some notes here. We can make sure that we have no privileges set for this specific view. We do not have a client in any of the tables that we're using here, but if we did, we may want to check these values here, especially as you will get zero results if you use session client while running from a session that doesn't have a set client. And now we can go ahead and build. complete it successfully, right click, data preview, and we have our data. Let's move on to the next tutorial in which we will use this calculation view in a reporting enabled calculation view.